Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Mercedes AMG A45S facelift. But they have not really lifted the face of this vehicle. Straight away we're going to be opening the engine bay. It's super duper hot. This is boiling hot. But I'll tell you why it heats up so much and how they managed to cool the engine of course. It says AMG there. I don't even know who's going to read it. But a lot of different kind of elements you see here in the engine bay. Different kind of insulation right there. Washer fluid goes in right here of course. And instead of the Mercedes logo, you have the AMG logo on the top. The regular Mercedes logo continues to be there. Hydraulic or other gas struts. In terms of design, it is very much similar to what it was before. But the bumper seems to have got real minor chintu mintu revisions. Says AMG here. You get front parking sensors. You get a provision for a front camera if you get a 360 degree parking camera, which is optional. Indicator is on at the moment. But that is actually the new DRL. Otherwise, the old one was extending here. The headlight design is similar to what it was before. Actually, the size is similar, but the internal elements have been changed. These are multi-beam LED lights and huge openings for the cooling of the engine and the ground clearance is like super low. So this thing actually touches a lot of places. You have to be super careful when actually driving this car. Now, the attention to detail is such that even the wipers have the Mercedes logo on it. <laughs> How maddening is that? And we have got sensors for ADAS, of course, on the top and then for the rain sensor as well. So it has got lane keep assist, it has got forward collision warning. The side profile is the same as before. In fact, the alloy wheel design is also the same as before. 245, 35, 19s, AMG red colored brake calipers there. And it's a beautiful looking car. You've got sensors on the side and you've got sensors almost everywhere. It says Turbo Formatic Plus here. It looks the same as before, so not much has really changed. But it's really very low and you would be very excited to see this rear spoiler which is optional by the way it's not part of standard kit so you have to pay a bit more for it but it looks fantastic again the size of the tail lights are the same as before however they get revised internal elements mercedes logo on the inside in fact there's a mercedes logo here on the viper as well so that is the kind of attention to detail It's got quad exhaust. Funnily enough, Mercedes's India website shows the AMG A45S with two exhausts, one on either side. I don't know why. Actually, there's only one pipe behind these dual exhaust, and it says AMG here. <laughs> Towing hook, rear parking sensors. I don't know why this fake stuff is happening. Not needed at all. There is the diffuser, and I'll show you the underbody quickly. Beautiful looking car, yeah. This is an amazing vehicle. This is from where the camera actually comes out, says AMG here, A45S there and what a rear profile, it actually looks fast while standing still too. Let's open the boot which is absolutely useless because the spare wheel is placed right on top. So how will you keep luggage? Tire size is Chintu Mintu 125, 17, 19s. some storage space here, there's a 12 volt charging socket, there's a light placement in the, I mean on the inside it's hidden. And here is where the jack is inside this nice dabba. Let's shut this. Shuts with a proper thud. Now there's a very funny thing happening here. Before that, let me show you where the fuel goes in right there. Tire pressure recommendation and fuel pressure, I mean, fuel octane recommendation. You have to put 98 octane to really extract the best out of this car. But this is very upright. It is not going behind. Why? Okay, let me put it down because you have to actually put this down and then only it reclines. So there, recline angle changes that's a very weird way of doing it but again we've got a 60 40 split in order to increase the boot carrying capacity space at the rear is decent not great 
फुट रूम इज नॉट दैट ग्रेट अन्य था बोट इज पुअर एंड हेड रूम इज जस्ट अबाउट एडिक्वेट नाइस मटीरियल यूज नो मैगजीन होल्डर्स टू एसी वेन्स यू एस बी सी चार्जिंग सॉकेट नो एसी कंट्रोल हियर यू गेट अ सेंटर आर्म रेस्ट विथ ट्विन कप होल्डर्स बाय द वे द सेंटर पैसेंजर थैंकफुली गेट्स अ हेड बट दीज आर नॉन एडजस्टेबल सो ओनली द सेंटर पैसेंजर हैज एन एडजस्टेबल हेड रेस्ट बिकॉज ही हैज एन एडजस्टेबल नेक लाइट प्लेसमेंट हेयर ऑन द टॉप डैशबोर्ड ऑल्सो लुक्स वेरी सिमिलर टू बिफोर बट दे हैव मेड अ वेरी बैड चेंज विच आई शो यू इन अ बिट टिकलिंग फंक्शन इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल सो यू कैन टिकल द फ्रंट पैसेंजर नो हाइट एडजस्टेबल सीट बेल्ट फॉर द फ्रंट सीट्स दैट्स कैन ऑफ शॉकिंग डोर पॉकेट्स आर डिसेंट साइज यू कैन सी समाउंट ऑफ इंडियन लाइटिंग एज वेल लेट्स गेट आउट लेट मी शट दिस ओवरऑल क्वालिटी इज ऑब्वियसली फे नॉमिनल एंड हियर इज द आई थिंक द रियर फॉग लाइट सो या इट्स देर ओनली ऑन वन ऑफ द साइड्स दे आर नो फ्रंट फॉग्स let me press a button to actually adjust the seat there you see the seat is going back these are sporty seats no adjustable headrest it doesn't need it but you sit very low down getting in and out is not that easy and the support is never an issue lot of stuff here amg does not light up at night proper dead pedal you can see the ambient lighting knee airbag is also given in this car big enough door pockets everything is illuminated right here these are controls for the seat adjustment heating function is there for the seats but cooling and massage is optional and you can save up to 3 people setting only for the driver co driver has also got memory seats actually and obviously it has got power adjust as well seats are nice and comfortable says amg here has is yellow finishing but where are the yellow or red seat belts i think those are part of optional kit controls for the lights and for the handbrake as well once inside it is very much very much the same as before so not much has changed in that regard but this new element has been added some graphics and it says amg right here just to remind you which car you are in and glove box is decent size with a light as well but hard plastics lower down physical controls for the air conditioning thank you so much three ac vents in the center just rotate them like this to shut them of course and if i'm going to increase the temperature the color of this actually changes here you get piano black finishing this thing is new earlier there was a touch pad mercedes has removed it a full size phone like a pro max from apple does not fit in here so this is kind of useless this is a button to get into dynamic mode so i'm just going to get into dynamic mode right now and then it opens the screen to browse through and decide how you want the settings to be very weird you can't do anything here earlier you could just browse through like this volume controller and this is to get into the parking camera this thing obviously opens you get two usb c charging sockets some amount of storage space there as well you obviously get a mirror along with a light let's open the sunroof which is actually decent size it's a big sunroof the cabin is quite sporty but it's very similar to the lesser a class models that it opens really nice and big let's open the sunroof as well and obviously with the key also you can do all this and more so interior is very similar to what it was before but there's a downgrade okay let me see if it can go any further no that's about it yeah this is a downgrade for sure i do not like it there's some storage space here oh my goodness there's a bmw key right there that's kind of crazy with m colors on it wireless charging pad usb c charging socket twin cup holders which you can shut and open like this So that's kind of nice. The screen is kind of small once you drive a BMW car, which has a 14.3 inch curved screen. This one is a 10.25 inch screen. The regular stuff which we have seen in a lot of Mercedes cars, very high quality. You can get into settings, change a lot of stuff. I've already explained this screen like a thousand times. You also got an IWC clock right now with a start-stop function, which is kind of cool. They are the sponsors of Mercedes AMG Racing Team Formula One, of course. Track pace is there. Then in comfort, you can actually turn on seat kinetics, which is sort of a massage, but it's not the real deal for me, honestly. Ambient lighting has got multiple colors, so here I can get into the colors. 64 colors, and also everything feels a bit pared down when compared to bigger models from Mercedes-Benz. Let's actually get into reverse. So this is the reverse parking camera. It has obviously got adaptive guidelines, front and rear parking sensors. This screen is 10.25 inch as well. Again, nothing much has changed here either. Yeah, it's the same as before. It gives you a lot of information, but there's a big change. S class style yeah layout so you can just change it on the go like this you don't have to get into multiple menus that's also kind of awesome i really like it there's a new super sport one which looks like this and because this whole system of changing the drive modes are so complicated we have got new ones here so the steering is actually new it has these multiple spokes this is to browse through the screen this is again for volume and all that this is to browse through the screen this is for cruise control and this is to change the drive mode there's six of them like too many and this is to get into the various functions of the vehicle so here i can decide if i want the gearbox to be manual stop start system amg dynamics exhaust and what not traction control system that's kind of nice but the steering wheel is adjustable manually 
it's kind of weird huh at this price you expect better you get nice paddles which tell you down and up otherwise you might use it in the wrong way of course steering feels really nice to hold beautiful grip and bermester speakers audio quality is good but nobody really cares about it airbag written here this is obviously auto dimming plenty of features great quality but it also performs the same as before but we still go for a drive All right, we're all set to go, which means turning off the air conditioning. Come on, this doesn't turn off in one go. Now it's off. We straight away get into race mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, and before that, let me actually turn off. Oh my God! Yeah, physical buttons would be so better. First, you turn on the sport handling mode. Keep this pressed, and then it turns off the ESP completely. If I press both the paddles. Drift mode activated. It says drift mode unavailable. Hazard lights off. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Race start. <laughs> Performance is just unbelievable. It pulls Caution. so strong. Sharp curve in 300 meters. Just shut up. This lady na is so chatty na. She keeps coming up with some of the other bull. That there's a curve ahead. There's a school ahead. School nearby in 100 meters. There's a BMW ahead. It keeps saying all that. So I need to. I don't know how to shut it. So I'm not going to shut it for the moment. But I'm just going to turn on this performance thing so that you can see the engine data when I accelerate. How much power and torque is being consumed. Oh my God! This car just pulls so nicely. So this is a two-liter four-cylinder engine which has a single turbocharger. Yeah, it has a single turbocharger. Yet it produces 421 horsepower at 6,700 RPM. So yeah. Peak power comes in very late, and it produces a lot of power for a four-cylinder engine. That's the reason it's the most powerful four-cylinder engine car in the world. 421 horsepower. I'm not able to <laughs> digest it only. So this is the A45s. There's a A45 which actually makes 30, 40 horsepower less. I think around 33 horsepower lesser. Horn is nice and loud in this car. It feels very eager and enthusiastic, and heads-up display is not there in this car. Blind spot monitor is not there. All of that is part of optional kit. You can opt for it if you have a lot more money to spend. And now, in terms of performance, it is amazing. It's just phenomenal. But in terms of real-world usage, it is not that great because when you come across a speed breaker, you have to really slow down. You have to angle the car. There are no, I mean, there's no air suspension here, so obviously that's a bit of a problem. And then when you get onto the throttle, you reach the next speed breaker very quickly because the performance is just unbelievable. The gearbox is also very aggressive in the way it shifts. Torque output 500 newton meters. Now 500 newton meters would come where, right? The aim is always to get it at a lower RPM. No, not in Mercedes. At least not in the A45. They have got the peak torque output coming in at 5000 RPM, 5000 to 5000 to 50 RPM, very high up in the rev range. But why? Because they want this car to have the character of a naturally aspirated engine, so you don't feel like a like you're driving a turbocharged engine. And it's really worked because obviously there is turbo lag, plenty of it. In fact, mid range is nice, low end is sh but the top end is stupendous. Past 4000 RPM, it's a different animal altogether. It pulls all the way till it's 7200 RPM red line, like a super bike. The top end is just so freer. I'm I'm pumbling because. The tachometer needle and the speedo needle is slamming at such a rapid pace that I'm trying to keep up. I can't because this car is just absolutely nerve-wracking. It is nut-cracking. It is mind-bogglingly phenomenal. What a car! What an engine! Oh, let me catch my breath. I am just spellbound by the way this car performs. I drove it on the nat tracks race track and I loved it. Out on the road, I definitely hate it. Oh, because the ride is very bad. It's horrible. It's just, just, just unbelievably. Because you can feel every bump on the road. In fact, I am suggesting that the Indian government purchases at least hundred of these whenever Caution. a new. Shop Please keep quiet. Yeah, don't engage with me. I'm talking something. Yeah, why you interrupt me? Anyways, yeah. So I was telling the Indian government should get hundred of these, and every time a new road is made, the engineer and the infrastructure team should actually sit in this car and do a round on that road to know where are the issues. If the car has no sounds on the inside of the road. And no bumps can be felt on the inside past that road. I can assure you, not a single freaking road in India will pass that test because this car is 
so communicative because of the low profile tires because of the stiff suspension and because of the stiff engine mounts you can feel each and everything inside the cabin is just too stiff and very badly insulated actually the low profile tires them and the way the tires are you can feel everything on the inside you can hear a lot of the tire noise a lot of the wind noise you can hear everything and then because the cabin is well insulated yet you can hear a lot of things you can just imagine an expansion joint so you can feel each and every bump on the road so low speed ride is bad as you speed up the ride becomes better for sure but overall ride isn't that great so i'm just going to change the cluster mode because we can of course this doesn't really suit it but it at least tells me the various factors which can be changed in this car so the engine can be changed the gear box can be changed then there's something known as amg dynamics which is traction control esp and the differential so all those three can be altered as well you can alter the sound if you want the active exhaust on or not traction control and so many things like you need a few days to sit in this car to actually set it up it's that complicated but the pull is unbelievable this engine is amazing it's not loud enough on the inside so obviously fake sounds are routed through the speakers they actually have a sensor in the exhaust from which uh, they are able to pair or match the outside sound to the inside sound so that you can feel a little excited while driving this car but the speed is just unbelievable it will do a top speed of 270 km per hour claimed i have done 280 km per hour on natrax with the pre facelift model the engine remains the same there's no change i think they have made minor changes to make it comply with bs 6.2 emission norms but you can't feel any difference as such it still performs the same as before in fact it goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.9 seconds real world it will take around 4 seconds we have launch control here of course we have got six drive modes which are three drive modes too many because why do we need six drive modes so there's individual where you can configure various things there is comfort there's sport there's sport plus there is race mode as well so here let me just i forget a few drive modes yeah there's a snow mode as well i never remember snow modes because obviously there is no snow in mumbai or maharashtra ever so that's something which i always keep away from gearbox is really fast with shift this is actually an 8 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with manual control using the paddles and it will hold on to again it will not upshift if you want manual control just tap one of the paddles it will get into manual mode and then it will not upshift so we are already in first gear which means i'm going to whack open the throttle and then you are going to see that it's not going to upshift no it upshifted because i have to actually select it from the menu so i told you it's very complex as such car does go airborne quite a few times what is the highlight here is the performance but what is even better than the performance is definitely the handling the handling is unreal it's super sharp it's super stiff and it is super agile as well the steering is very nice i find it a bit light at high speeds and a bit heavy at lower speeds because when i'm trying to maneuver at lower speeds a little bit more effort at high speeds it could be a little bit heavier as such but trust me the ride is something which really spoils the fun on the road you can't really push this car hard and you're always worried will i damage the underbody or something across a speed breaker ground clearance is very 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 low here so we are just going to change this right now i'm going to get into the super sport mode hazard lights on i have to change something here so i get into the dynamic settings here we get into manual for the gearbox left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off race start there it holds on to a gear there <laughs> it blinks and it turns everything red by the way it will automatically make a upshift when you're driving it in manual mode when you do a race start because then obviously you are doing a race start you're in a race you can't afford to shift gears it's going to take time so the car understands that and will automatically make shifts for you as well so here we're going to get it out of manual mode because it does faster shifts when it's doing it automatically of course because the engine revs fast but somehow the engine or rather the gear box or the gearing is very short so short geared car goes very fast through the revs and before you know it it's upshifted it's upshifted and when driven at slow speeds even in race mode now it wants to upshift if you're not on heavy throttle so it wants to conserve fuel it has a 51 liter fuel tank fuel efficiency is between 4 to 8 km per liter depending on your driving style it drinks a lot of fuel so mercedes has actually used a single turbocharger why a single turbocharger in a car of this size i mean 2 liter having a single turbo for making 421 horsepower doesn't make sense right obviously mercedes wanted to use twin turbos or a single turbo and a supercharger but they had packaging issues so they had to do with one turbocharger which means that turbocharger is really big in this car and it heats up a lot the engine itself heats up a lot in fact they've got three water pumps three freaking water pumps one dedicatedly for cooling the cylinder head itself which actually pumps in around 220 240 liters of water every freaking minute and there's some vibration or rattle coming from the doors i told you now this car is not meant for indian roads because every bump on the road can be felt so it pumps so much water 
through the cylinder head around it to cool it and even then if it still heats it will actually take the air conditioning from the inside towards the engine to cool the engine and that is because of the way the vehicle has been packaged the engine has been packaged and the turbocharger size results in all this heating it heats way too much trust me i've never seen a car which heats this much the engine at least madly heats up i had to use cloth and all to open the hood and i had to wait for the car to cool down to actually open the hood because it is just unbelievably hot the temperatures in fact the job of this water pump is to reduce the heat from 200 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius uh, it's a difficult job i know <laughs> Brakes are nice. The brakes are very strong on this car, but on bad roads, it does screech. Look, someone brake hard. Might be me only someday. Let's change the instrument cluster mode again. Track pace here. We've changed this as well. Hazard lights off. Left foot on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator. Race start did not activate only. What happened to you, car? Why did you disappoint me like that? We'll try that again. One second. Why is it not getting into race start? We are in comfort mode, that's why. Now we are in race mode. Uh, race start, immediate. Hazard lights on again, we messed up there. Hazard lights off, race start, and off we go. The car lunges ahead with so much enthusiasm that I will immediately come into comfort mode to save some fuel. Kidding, the reason I'm in comfort mode is because it has obviously got a lot of ADAS functions, which will not work right now when traction control is off. It is in spite of the fact traction is on or off, you don't feel any difference because of 4-wheel drive system, of course. There, the warning is there. And then obviously it will automatically apply brakes as well. It's got lane keep assist too, which works decently well. So Mercedes is offering all this since a long time. Now it has got a mechanical locking limited slip differential at the front and an electronic one at the rear, which can channel up to 100% torque to one wheel, depending on the requirement of traction. It is four wheel drive, but it definitely feels more rear biased in the way the power delivery is so that you can actually power out through corners. But they have really made a very smart system here that the computer definitely understands what it needs to do. So it will never, ever, ever channel so much power that you will oversteer yet it will not channel so much power to the front that you will understeer there is always this balance and the drift mode in this car works very differently so when you engage drift mode what it does is it does not disengage the front axle which is usually the case with bmw and mercedes all-wheel drive cars instead what it does is it will apply brakes on the inside wheel and then push all the power to the outside wheel thereby making drift mode active resulting in power slides so very different kind of drift mode in this car the price of this car is rupees 1.11 crores on on mumbai the rival is the bmw m2 the car which i drove recently which has a manual gearbox of course which somehow feels better to drive because it's not as unbearable in terms of ride comfort this one is definitely quite unbearable you can feel every inch of the road and not just the bumps you can also hear the noises so i think those things can be much better this car is not suited to india period no two ways about it you can see how it's moving all over the place so yeah that could be better but no it's just outright stiff outright aggressive and outright unbearable in terms of the ride quality of this car something i absolutely hate because when i drove this car in delhi after the natrax experience i was in shock i'm like why is this car so different than what i experienced on the natrax racetrack that's not a race track that's a test track but still huge difference because our roads are absolute garbage so you can feel every crevice on the road and that's a bit of a problem which brings me to the bmw versus mercedes rivalry plain and simple mercedes benz makes cars which are extremely stiff for their amg models meanwhile bmw actually has a good balance so bmw cars i'm talking specifically about m cars have a way better ride at lower speeds when compared to mercedes cars however the thing is absolutely ultra ultra at high speeds because at high speeds mercedes cars don't feel hairy because of the stiffness but bmw cars do feel hairy i'm talking about m models itself so bmw understands most people actually buy the cars for show so they didn't really care about having stupendous high speed stability but here mercedes benz was like no we should give them the best possible performance and that's that and i love the way the pedal feel is there uh, other than the sound everything is so good in this car the sounds of the roads of course hair classic and uh, okay again i got into comfort mode race start unbelievable and it's so sharp now 
directional changes are amazing grip levels are fantastic this is the car which will put a massive smile on your face the only thing you need is a race track and a coca as well because this is expensive 3.88 lakhs is the cost of insurance for the first year of this car if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye